ברוך הבא בשם ישוע המשיח. Blessed is he that comes in the name of ישוע. Welcome to the Torah introduction. The following is the translation of the message that was uh, recorded in Spanish. The message from Parashat Toldot. We are going to read about uh, the history of Yaakov and his brother and Yitzhak and Rivka, his wife. So we welcome Yeshua to be our teacher and I pray you will receive wisdom from this message and that healing will be manifest and deliverance as we know the truth and the truth set us free. Because if uh, Yeshua set us free, we are free. Indeed. Shalom Aleichem. To the 12 tribes that are in the dispersion in the diaspora, greetings in the name of Yeshua. A holy embrace to all the disciples of Yeshua and the whole remnant of Israel that is in the nations and to all the sons of Elohim and to all men of goodwill. From here in Jerusalem, the city of peace, Ir Shalom, Yerushalayim. Ir is city and Shalom is peace. Yir Shalom, Yerushalayim, the city of peace. Of course, there is no peace without the Prince of Peace. Sar Shalom is Prince of Peace. Sar is Prince. Today we use that as Minister. And Shalom is Peace. Yeshua is a Sar Shalom. He is a Sar Shalom as it is said in Isaiah 9.6. The Prince of Peace. Genesis chapter 25 verse 19 begins the portion that is called Toldot. Toldot comes from verse 19 where it says, These are the descendants. Vitzak, son of Avraham. And that's where it continues. We start with a prayer. We call on your precious name, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Teacher, the Rabbi, the Leader, our Leader, Aviad. We give you many thanks, Yeshua, for giving us your scriptures, this wonderful gift, and we give you thanks even more for your Holy Spirit that leads you to all truth and announces the things that are to come because without your Spirit, we cannot, Yeshua. We give you thanks for your generosity and having so much care for us, for giving us your scriptures, for speaking to us through the scriptures, and we invite you to come as our teacher because you are the one that comes to teach us of all the mysteries that are in the scriptures, about the prophecies that are in the scriptures, the stories, your wonderful word that is there from the story of salvation of your power of your mercy that has guided all our ancestors to you to walk in your ways and we ask you for forgiveness if they didn't do it in perfection if they rebelled against you we proclaim that we are in complete disagreement with all rebellion that was in our forefathers and any rebellion that can be in us and we decide to follow you in obedience and we ask you for all the grace to obey you father that this word this portion of the torah of these scriptures and the work and the flow of the river that would flow from your throne will enter into the hearts of all the brethren that are in the uttermost parts of the world in the farthest countries that can speak english that they will hear this and we ask you that your river will reach them wash them purify them renew them revive them refresh them with something new that you are giving at this hour and we ask it for in in the name of yeshua the messiah thank you lord we give you now i read from genesis chapter 25 verse 19 And these are the generations of Yitzhak, Avram's son. Avram begot Yitzhak, and Yitzhak was forty years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Aramean, of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban the Aramean, to be his wife. And Yitzhak entreated of Yehu for his wife, because she was barren. And Yehu let himself be entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, wherefore do I live? And she went to inquire of Yehu. In Hebrew, it doesn't say they struggled. They were running or moving. And Yehu said unto her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people shall be separated from your bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. I'm not sure if to call it basic, but there is a spiritual rule that we see it one and time again. And we should be able to understand this, to see it with prophetic eyes. What happens to the fathers happens to the children. And I mean the children of Israel, of course, those who call upon the name of the Lord and have the Lord. This that the wife of 
Yitzhak was barren. Does it sound familiar? The father of Yitzhak was Avraham. And in the previous portions, we delighted in the promise of a son. And Abraham has a child at a very advanced age. And what happened to Sarah happens to Rebekah. And the same promises are renewed as the Lord opens the womb of Rebekah and giving her in her womb twins. And as we read, there was a struggle within, but it was so much that Rebecca called on to the Lord asking for mercy. I think that this struggle was so great that she said, if this is like so, why do I live in verse 22? So the Lord in his mercy says, look, there are two peoples in your womb. And here the Lord declares, this is word of the Lord. Verse 23 is not a story. It is word of the Lord. And Yahu answered her, two nations are in your womb and two people shall be separated from your vows. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elders shall serve the younger. We understand that when the older will serve the younger, it says that the the younger will be stronger. The people of the younger will be stronger and they will receive the blessing. There is prosperity for all the children of Avraham, but there is a line of blessing that is through Yitzhak. And we will read of that in time that it will pass on to Yaakov. Now this verse, this word is very important because Rebecca receives it and understands from before they were born that the younger would be stronger than the older, that the younger would be served by the older. And this leads Rebecca later on to take certain decisions and act in a certain way knowing that she had the promise of this word and this is why the example for us is to act according to the promises that Yeshua has given us and not in a crazy way but with wisdom for when the Lord gives us a promise we act in faith knowing that the promise will come to pass and this will give us prosperity that it will prosper our ways when we do it in obedience so that the will of the Lord will come to pass verse 24 and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came forth ruddy, all over like a hairy mantle. In the Hebrew, it doesn't say ruddy, it says red-haired. And they called his name Esau, and in Hebrew is Esav. And after that came forth his brother, and his hand had hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Yaakov. And Yitzhak was sixty years old when she wore them. We're going to break off with certain traditions and collective of culture about Yaakov. Yaakov means hand on the heel, but it also means the following one. There's nothing negative or bad about his name, especially when it means the one that follows, because we are called to follow Yeshua. Yaakov, Yeshua, Mashiach. I will follow Yeshua, the Messiah. We are followers. And in that case, Yaakov, the name is a blessing to us. And it does not mean usurper. Yaakov means the one that follows or hand on the heel. The names in Hebrew have meaning most names and sometimes they have more than one meaning like the name Yeshua which can be interpreted as Yah Yahu Shua Yahu saves or Yah saves and it can also be interpreted as salvation because in Hebrew it's Yeshua the name Yeshua the first part of the word salvation without the last letter only would need one more letter to have the meaning or the understanding or the sense of salvation the names are abbreviations of a phrase therefore you don't expect to have the entire phrase in the name, but just the first letters or part of the words that signify the name. For example, the name of Yeshua can be Yah saves or Yahu saves or the Lord saves. All the significance and meanings that a name may carry because they have the initials or the roots of the verse that are needed in a word. I continue to read verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Yaakov was a quiet man dwelling in tents. I want to reveal to you, brethren, and with this, help to establish in the hearts all the revelation of who really was Yaakov, and to expose the lie that we have been culturally given, especially in the nations, about who Yaakov was. Yaakov says in verse 27 that he was Ishtam, Yoshev Ohalim. Let me translate this literally from the Hebrew. And Yaakov 
twelve innocent men or perfect dweller of tents. The word tam is the same word that is used for Yeshua when we speak of the innocent lamb, the perfect lamb. Hase hatamim in Hebrew, the perfect lamb, the innocent lamb that was Yeshua. For the word tam is used throughout scripture to define specifically the patriarchs and also one of the things that Elohim requires of us, especially expressed in the Psalms, that we would be tam, that we would have a heart that is tam, that we would be innocent, that we have a innocent heart, perfect, that we would have a perfect heart because Yeshua is our example and Yeshua was the perfect lamb. Hase hatamim. The same Elohim is defining Yaakov who traditionally or culturally, especially in the nations, is defined as a usurper, as a deceiver, but the Torah defines it as a perfect man, a perfect person, an innocent person, and not like so, Esau. And with this revelation, let's enter in and seek that perfect heart and innocent that Yeshua had so that in us will rise a river of innocence, of perfection, that we might be pleasurable to our Elohim without spot or wrinkle to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. I continue reading. Verse 28. Now Yitzhak loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, and Rebekah loved Yaakov. And Yaakov sawed pottage, cooked a stew. And Esau came in from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Yaakov, Let me swallow, I pray you, some of this red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Yaakov said, Sell me first your birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at a point to die. What profit shall the birthright do to me? And Yaakov said, Swear to me first. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Yaakov. And Yaakov gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. So Esau despised his birthright. Well, here we're not going to talk about any deception, because clearly the scripture says that Esau despised his birthright. This has happened throughout millennia. There has always been an animosity against Yaakov, against the Jews, and this has fortified the thought that Yaakov was a deceiver, a usurper, and that that type of person, and that Esau was a victim. And truthfully, the scriptures point to something completely different. For of the Lord, it is very valuable that we should appreciate the inheritance, the blessing, the firstborn right, the promises. For him, it is very important that we appreciate the promises given to our forefathers, and he does not appreciate those who do not appreciate or value the blessings because these are not primarily material but spiritual. They are principally spiritual. Therefore, we should value the promises that the Lord has made to our forefathers. Even to our forefathers, that pleases the Lord when we value the promises and the blessing. And this is something that pleases the Lord. I read from Genesis 26. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Yitzhak went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down unto Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you, for unto you and unto your seed I will give all of these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore unto Abraham your father. And I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto your seed all these lands, and by your seed shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because that Abraham hearkened to my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Great is the Lord, and this scripture is very great. Look again. What happens to the fathers happens to the children. There was a famine in the times of Abraham, and he went down to Egypt, and in the times of Yitzhak, something very similar happens, and Yitzhak goes down to Egypt, but the Lord appears to him and says, don't go down to Egypt, but dwell in the land that I will show you. And in fact, he dwelt in the land of the Philistines. Genesis 26 verse 5. It says that because Abraham hearkened to the voice of the Lord and kept his charges, his commandments, his statutes, and his laws. Phrases like so are found in the Torah when the Lord gives to Moses the commandments and repeatedly the Lord speaks of his commandments, his precepts, his statutes, his laws. This is a great revelation 
brethren. Avram was already keeping the commandments of the Lord, the laws of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord. They were kept by Avram. Remember we had seen, for example, that there were details in the Torah about how to keep the commandments of the Lord and to understand about impurity, about unclean animals, about clean animals. Since the time of the Ark of Noah, there is a manifestation of the knowledge of what animals are clean and impure. And he tells Noah to place in the ark seven pairs of clean animals and only one pair of unclean animals. So it begins to manifest at some point and in some form that there was a previous knowledge of the precepts and the commandments of the Lord. And these are words of the Lord. These are not, this is not a story. It says that he heard the voice of the Lord and he kept his charge, his commandments, his statutes, his laws, his precepts. It doesn't just talk about commandments. In fact, the word is very extensive. His precepts, commandments, statutes, and laws. He had an understanding of the commandments of the Lord. This is the Torah. Abraham had knowledge of the Torah and he respected the commandments of the Lord. This is what the scripture is saying. Wonderful, isn't it? The Torah was not born with Moses for it is eternal for Yeshua is the Torah and he is eternal. He has no beginning and no end. Do you remember in the book of Zechariah in chapter 14 it speaks of the celebration of tabernacles. Verse 16, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, Yehu of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This is a prophecy of the future, and now we read about the past before the desert, before Moses had received the tablets of the law, that Abraham was already keeping the commandments and statutes and precepts and laws. Why? Because the law, the Torah, is alive. Because Yeshua is all the words of the Torah. He is the word. Remember, John, in the beginning was the word or the verb from the Greek translated the word Hadavar in Hebrew. And the word was with Elohim and the word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that had been made. John 1. The commandments are eternal because he is eternal, because Yeshua is eternal, because Yeshua is the word. I continue reading Genesis 26, verse 6. And Yitzhak dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, My wife, lest the men of the place should kill me for Rivka, Rebecca, because she is fair to look upon. Look again. What happens to the fathers happens to the children. Sarah was of beautiful semblance, and Rebecca was also of beautiful semblance, fair to look upon. And Aram said more than once that Sarah was his sister. And Yitzhak says the same thing. This is a prophecy because this is a prophetic word. Therefore, it is a prophecy, and what happens to the fathers? happens to the children. Verse 8, And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out at the window and saw and behold Yitzhak was sporting, caressing Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called Yitzhak and said, Behold, of surety she is your wife. How have you said she is my sister? And Yitzhak said unto him, because I said, lest I die because of her. And Abimelech said, What is this that you have done unto us? One of the people might easily have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all the people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Notice that there were values in some kings, some people of the time. In fact, the word Abimelech means, My father is king. If you notice some of the Characters that appear in the Torah show that manifest the Lord in some way. What happened is the case of saying that Rebekah was his sister actually brought him blessing. Not only did it save his life, but it gives him blessing because the Lord acts upon them, defending his son, and the kings are able, in the case of Abraham, Pharaoh, and here the king, that the Lord is with them. And therefore, Abraham and Yitzhak are prospered because of the decisions that the kings take after receiving a warning to not touch the sons of the promise. I continue, verse 12. And Yitzhak sowed in the land and found in the same year a hundredfold, and Yehu blessed him, and the man waxed great and grew more and more until he became very great. And he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great household, and the Philistines envied him. What happens later on is that 
They really expel Yitzhak from the land because they see him prosper. But then they are fearful. So Yitzhak remains in the south and goes up to Beersheba. And we go to verse 23. And he went up from there to Beersheba. And Yehu appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the Elohim of Aram your father. Fear not, for I am with you. And I will bless you and multiply your seed for my servant Aram's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of Yehu and pitched his tent there. And there Yitzhak servants digged the well. Then Avimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahuzah his friend, and Fikol the captain of his host. And Yitzhak said unto them, Wherefore are you come unto me, seeing you hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw plainly that Yehu was with you, and we said, Let there be an oath betwixt us, and even betwixt us and you, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no hurt, and we have not touched you, and as we have done unto you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace, you are now blessed of Yehu. What happens is that the Lord was prospering Yitzhak, and he prospers him in such a way that they envy him and they expel him. But later on, a fear comes over them. Probably the amount of riches that Yitzhak accumulated probably were greater than the king Abimelech. So he himself expels him and then is fearful and wants to make a covenant to make sure for Yitzhak became very powerful. Verse 34 through 35. And when Esau was 40 years old, he took to wife Yudit, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Basemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And they were bitterness of spirit unto Yitzhak and to Rebekah. Chapter 27. And it came to pass that when Yitzhak was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his elder son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray you, your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field, and take me venison, and make me savory food, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. And Rebekah heard when Yitzhak spoke to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison, to bring it. And Rebekah spoke unto Yaakov her son, saying, Behold, I heard your father speak unto Esau your brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory food, that I may eat and bless you before Yehu before my death. Now therefore, my son, hearken to my voice according to that which I command you. Go now to the flock and fetch me from there two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory food for your father such as he loves, and you shall bring it to your father that he may eat it, so that he may bless you before his death. Remember, Rebekah has the promise when the children were in the womb. Rebekah prays and the Lord answers and says there are two peoples in your womb. One people is greater than the other people. The greater shall serve the younger. Rebekah acts according to the promise, the prophecy, the word that spoke the Lord. This is not a deception that Rebekah comes up with without any sense. And it is not definite. Yes, maybe she did love Yaakov more as the scripture says and that pushed her to do this more but it was doing it in obedience to the lord or in obedience to the will of the lord verse 11 and Yaakov said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a mocker, and I shall bring curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be your curse, my son, only hearken to my voice, and go fetch me them. Do you see it, brethren? She is ready to receive the curse as long as... Yaakov takes the blessing, but of course she knows she will not receive a curse because the Lord will prosper this way because it was and it is the will of the Lord before he was born. And this word of revelation that Rebecca has makes her acts like so. Verse, verse 14. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory food such as his father loved. And Rebekah took the choicest garments of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Yaakov, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck, and she gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Yaakov. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, who are you, my son? And Yaakov Yaakov said unto his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done according as you bathed me. Arise, I pray you, sit and eat of my venison, that your soul may bless you. And Yitzhak said unto his son, 
How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because Yehu, your Elohim, sent me a good speed. And Yitzhak said unto Yaakov, Come near, I pray you, that I may feel you, my son, whether you be my very son Esau or not. And Yaakov went near unto Yitzhak his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is the voice of Yaakov, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Are you my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless you. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine and and he drank. The importance of the blessing, the importance of receiving the blessing, and how much Yaakov appreciated the blessing in spite of the fear of being cursed. Rebecca too, as she acts in a way that might be condemned, she does so according to the word of the Lord, the will of the Lord, and the Lord prospers this path in spite of the details and things that might be outside of our values in our eyes. Look, the Lord is higher. His ways are higher and we sometimes don't understand the why and the how, but we know and we can see his hand and his favor for their path was prospered for Yaakov will receive the blessing according to the word that Rebekah received and according to the way that Rebekah and Yaakov acted. Verse 26. And his father Yitzhak said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which Yehu has blessed. So Elohim give you of the dew of heaven and of the fat places of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let the people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone that curses you and bless be everyone one that blesses you. This blessing is not just man's blessing, but it is a blessing that comes from the will of the Lord. Yitzhak asked Yaakov to prepare this pottage in order to bless him, and he does it in obedience to the Spirit. And in fact, the blessing that comes forth is wouldn't be anything had it not been an inspired blessing, for it is the will of the Lord. And in fact, here the people act with some kind of will, but what's really happening is something that the Lord has planned. And the words that come forth out of Yitzhak's mouth, they're more than just words, but they are prophecies and blessings that come from the Most High. So the discernment of how and and when and what to say, it's like doing everything that comes to hand. For the Lord is with Yaakov, and when he does so, he does it in obedience of the will of the Lord. And what happens in verse 30, And it came to pass, as soon as Yitzhak had made an end of blessing Yaakov, and Yaakov was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Yitzhak his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also made savory food, and brought it unto his father. And he said unto his father, Let my father arise, and need of his son's venison, that your soul may bless me. And Yitzhak his father said unto him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn son, Esau. And Yitzhak trembled very exceedingly and said, Who then is he that has taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before you came and have blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. The blessing Yitzhak himself knows and is able to recognize that it is supernatural. It is not something that was made of the will of men man, but it is supernatural, and it was established, and it is so, and it cannot be revoked. So Esau comes into this bitter exclamation, asking his father to bless him, and he says, do you only have one blessing? Please bless me. And he breaks out in crying and weeping. And at the end, Yitzhak, his father, blesses him. And also when I read the blessing, I want you to have your eyes open to understand that it is something that comes from the Lord himself. Understand? Because Yitzhak recognizes that what he proclaimed, what he proclaimed in the beginning was irrevocable. But here, the spirit of prophecy begins to operate again. And Yitzhak for Esau, his son. Verse 39, And Yitzhak his father answered and said unto him, Behold, of the fat places of the earth shall be your dwelling, and of the dew of heaven from above, and by your sword shall you live, and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass when you shall break loose, that you shall shake his yoke from off your neck. This is more a prophecy that he makes. Of course, it is a blessing as well. It is a proclamation over him. And it was done 
inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. And after this, Asaf gets very angry and desires to kill Yaakov, but the behavior of both Yitzhak and Rebecca is to protect Yaakov. And they give him orders in this way, receiving understanding of the Lord, finding out his will. Verse 41, and Esau hated Yaakov because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, Let the days of mourning for my father be at hand. Then I will slay my brother Yaakov. And the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Yaakov, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, your brother Esau, as touching you, does comfort himself, purposing to kill you. Now therefore, my son, hearken to my voice and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you, and he forgets that which you have done to him. Then I will send and fetch you from there. Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Yitzhak, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Yaakov take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do to me? Chapter 28 and Yitzhak called Yaakov and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Badan Aram to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take you a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. And Elohim Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be a congregation of peoples and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed with you that you may inherit the land of your sojournings which Elohim gave unto Abraham. Can you see the heart of Yitzhak? It is with Yaakov and he understands the will of the Lord and acts according to it. So Yaakov obeys the voice of his father and his mother and goes to the land of Padan Aram. Verse 5 and Yitzhak sent away Yaakov, and he went to Padan Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, Yaakov and Esau's mother. Now Esau saw that Yitzhak had blessed Yaakov and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from there, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Yaakov hearkened to his father and his mother and was gone to Padan Aram. And Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father. So Esau went unto Ishmael and took unto the wives that he had Maha the daughter of Ishmael, Aram's son, the sister of Nabayot, to be his wife. Thus ends this portion of the Torah, and in a way it reminds us of the story between Cain and Abel. Not exactly the same, but is very similar. What we need to seek in the stories of the Torah is what pleases our Elohim, what pleases Yeshua. When we see the favor of Elohim over one of the patriarchs, over one of the characters that are in this story, in the scriptures, pay attention to what was the behavior, what was his behavior. Let us not pay attention to what traditionally or religiously we have learned. I think the greatest example of how things have been distorted in religion, story, culture of religion, of any of the characters, is Yaakov. Because Yaakov, in the eyes of the Lord, was someone that pleased him, that valued the covenants, the inheritance, that was innocent, that was perfect. That is what the scriptures tell. But with the translation, this sense is lost. For the people that translated the scriptures were born and were formed in a culture, a religious culture culture with an anti-messianic sentiment or an anti-semitic sentiment which has darkened and shadowed what the Torah itself says. The Torah is not translated such as it is said, but with an intention. But not just that, there is a social culture, there is a historical social sentiment about what is in scripture. And it's not what the scripture says what we receive, but what tradition says we are to receive, which is similar, but it's not the same. Similar is not enough. And that's how all the errors and historical mistakes are passed on and are embraced by many. And there's too many. And it makes the people of Elohim to go far away by keeping things that the Lord did not say. And they come away from the truth following lies. And it might be that the scripture is affirming in many places that Yaakov was faithful and he pleased the Lord. But what we are told about Yaakov, what we learn, in fact, in religious circles, generally in the nations, speaks negatively about Yaakov. 
This is what is learned in the beginning. People learn first from what they hear and then they learn to read and they can read what the scripture says and there are many that will never get to the point of reading what the scripture says. One of the greatest examples that is shown there is the Ark of Noah how many animals are placed in the ark. The historical, religious, and social culture, it shows that there were two or a pair of every type of animal. And as we read, we found out that there weren't two, but seven of the pure animals, which are food, and only one pair of those unclean animals that are impure. And the problem here is the same. We grow up in a culture, a tradition, when we are taught that there's only a pair of all animals. And we find out that the most important animals, which are pure, clean, that are food, and there were not just a pair, but seven pairs of each. Thus, the one that does not or will not read the Torah will never know this revelation. You don't have to be a great studier of the Torah, a great student of the Torah, or have a great prophetic word to understand this. All you need is to read the Torah. Much damage is caused when we embrace the lie instead of the truth. And it is time that we should be able to see the dimension of things for many sicknesses and captivity in society, including in the house of faith, is that you embrace these lies because you believe these lies and they produce binding ties. Remember Yeshua said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth brings brings freedom. Lies bring captivity, prison, binding ties. When Yeshua healed the woman with the hunched back, he said that the enemy had kept her bound up. This sickness of being hunched over was a binding tie. And these binding ties come from lies. And the Lord is calling us to come out what we learn traditionally, which is not easy. We have to be strong and brave in order to confront with truth and put into doubt with discernment anything that is a lie and we have learned through tradition and the examples are many of the scripture that has been twisted and entire peoples have been keeping things that the Lord never said only because a verse was twisted. So the challenge is to know the truth and give the truth to all the sheep, all the children of all the remnant of all the precious remnant of Yeshua that he so much loves and wants to see in freedom in this moment. So we give thanks to Yeshua now. We give you thanks, Father, Avi Ad, Father of Eternity, Sar Shalom, El Givor, Yeshua HaMashiach, for giving us this wonderful revelation to understand and receive that the behavior of Yaakov, his life, was something that pleased you. And Lord, thank you for diluting and thinning out and disappearing all the things that we have learned throughout our lives. And we open our hearts completely so that your truths may come. And the symphony of truth will bring blessings of freedom, of liberation, of healing over each one of us. We give you thanks, Father, for this portion of the Torah and for everything that we have learned. We think, give you thanks, Yeshua, for your mercies, for keeping and conserving the Torah in Hebrew until today, because you have given us of the precious Ruach HaKodesh to guide us into all truth that we can read. We also give you thanks that Rivka and Yaakov worked in a way that was obedient to your will, which has brought us blessings to today. We give you thanks for those blessings that we receive today for the obedience of our ancestors. We give you thanks whether we are the house of Israel or the house of Yehuda. To you be the kavod and the tiferet because you are generous with your people, because you faithfully bless throughout your covenants your people. And thus we exalt you, Yeshua. To you be the kavod and the glory, the tiferet, the exaltation, the honor. There is no one like the God of Israel. There is no one like you. You are sehatamim, the innocent lamb, the perfect lamb. And we love your ways and we seek your face all the time. And to you be all the kavod, all the exaltation. And we pray in the precious name of Yeshua of Israel. Amen. Shalom to Israel. Peace be to Israel. Amen.